Hello, I'm JW. This is a continuation of combination boilers and two heating zones. And if you haven't seen the first episode of this one, then links to that are in the usual place, as this basically continues on from that. Now, last time we saw how to do it if you're going to use two 30 volt switching, and of course that's suitable for boilers that have that particular kind of switch input. But there are certain boilers which do not have that, and they either have uh, various other voltages, 24 or whatever else. And if you've got one of those, shoving 230 volts into the 24 volt, for example, input is only going to result in expensive damage and destruction. So this is how we can actually modify the diagrams we saw previously and actually use them for another voltage entirely, whether that's 24 or whatever the voltage happens to be in your particular boiler. Now there's two ways you can do this. We're going to cover both of those in this episode. So let's just have a look at what we got to last time and see how we can amend that for use with a lower voltage boiler. Now we'll start here with the diagram we ended up with last time, which is for the 230 volt switching. Now most of the wiring is actually going to be the same as we had for that. And if you haven't seen the previous video, of course, then that's already been covered on the previous episode, so links to that in the usual place. Now in order to change this to a system which does not send 230 volts into the boiler switched input, we need to make a couple of changes here. So first of all, we need to change the boiler we've got over on the left side there, because of course it doesn't have an SL or switched line input. So we'll change it there to a boiler with two terminals on the input. We've labelled those A and B here, but of course different boilers have different uh, names for them. The important thing is that it's two terminals in the boiler. When they're connected together, the boiler will operate, and when they're not connected, then it will not. So it's just uh, joining those together as required. Now the wire we used to have going to SL, we're still going to connect to the boiler. That's going to go to A in this particular case. And we do need to add another wire, of course, from terminal B, so we'll add that in as well. And we'll actually take that to terminal number 10 in the wiring centre. That's currently a spare terminal that hasn't been used. And we can see those two wires highlighted in red there. So those are the two we'd basically need to join together to activate the boiler. Now the next change we need to make is the grey wires that go into the two zone valves. Now currently these are connected to permanent line on terminal 1 there. Because we don't want permanent line going in because that's exactly what we don't want to be shoving into the boiler. So we're going to remove those wires from terminal 1 and instead we're going to connect them to terminal 10 in the wiring centre. So you can see they're over there on the right hand side. Now the grey and orange wires inside the valve don't actually connect to the motor or anything else. There's just simply a switch inside the valve and when the valve is open the switch will close and it connects the grey and orange wires together. That switch doesn't have any voltage on it other than what we're putting on it. So all we have now is two wires coming from each valve which just has basically a switch on the end of it. Those two wires are then extended through to the boiler on A and B. So when the switch in either valve closes it will make a connection between the A and B terminals in the boiler and that will turn the boiler on. And the important thing here is that those terminals 9 and 10 are not connected to mains voltage in any way. It's purely the wires from the boiler and the ones from the switch inside the zone valve. Now just as before we'll just run through the sequence for each of the two zones operating. So to start with we'll have a look at uh, thermostat receiver number one which is the one at the top right there. So this is in the default state where nothing is obviously doing anything. So when heat is required for zone one the switch inside that particular receiver moves across there and we get 230 volts coming out on pin three there and that goes to number seven in the wiring center. And um, we can see that highlighted in red there. That's connected to the brown wire going into the zone valve on the top there. So that will activate the motor inside the valve and open the valve. And then once the valve is open, that switch inside, which we discussed earlier, will close. And that will join the orange and grey wires together. Now I've highlighted those in a purple colour here because although they're joined together, of course they're not importantly connected to 230 volts. They're just connected to each other. So those two connect together. We can see those go to 9 and 10 in the wiring centre. And of course we have two wires in there going to the boiler A and B. So all that's done is connected A and B together. So now the boiler will turn on, heat the water and circulate it through the pipes. And because the valve is open for zone 1, the hot water will be circulated through there and heat the upstairs of the property, but not the downstairs. Now the sequence for downstairs is pretty much the same. So we've got the receiver 2 there, the switch in there moves across to terminal 3. 230 volts comes out on terminal 3, goes to terminal 8 in the wiring centre. That's connected to the brown wire for zone valve number 2. 
So of course that becomes live. The motor in the valve will operate, opening the valve. When the valve gets to the open position, the switch inside links the orange and grey wires together, again shown here in that purple colour. And just as before, those wires also go through to the boiler A and B terminals. So once again, we've connected A and B together in the boiler. The boiler will switch on and heat the water, and it will therefore be circulated through zone 2 in this case, because that's the valve which is open, with zone 1 not being open. So it only goes to the downstairs on this one. And just as we had previously, if you want to have heat on both floors of the building, both receivers will then activate and send power out on number 3. Both of the valves will be powered and both will open. And then the switch in both valves will actually close and connect the two together. So you've got the purple ones shown there all linked together, which again serves the same purpose, just connects A and B in the boiler together. And now water is circulated through zone 1 and zone 2. So that's how it's done with a boiler that doesn't have a 230 volt input. And the important thing to note here is that the terminals 9 and 10 in that wiring centre are never connected to 230 volts and they're entirely separate. All that's on those is whatever voltage the boiler is providing on those A and B terminals, which they could be 24 volts or some other voltage. Doesn't particularly matter. It's coming from the boiler and going back to the boiler. Now there's only one slight problem with this arrangement here in that the wires that come from the zone valves are typically all in the same cable. So that does result in you having 230 volts on some of the wires for the blue and brown there. And of course other voltages on the orange and grey. And of course if someone was to mix them up in the wiring centre then it could result in 230 volts going into the boiler. So if you're going to use this one it might be an idea to put the terminals 9 and 10 say separated in the wiring centre with some sort of division between them so it's clear that that's not a 230 volt part and obviously proper labelling of things is clearly desirable. But electrically it's going to work just fine. All the cables in this are rated to 230 volts and above, so not a problem using them at lower voltages. So it's important to note here that although the boiler has an input which is only a low voltage of 12 or 24 volts or something, the actual receiver units or thermostats are still switching at 230 volts because of course they're not controlling the boiler directly, they're just controlling the zone valves, which of course have 230 watt motors in. So all we've changed here is effectively the two wires to the boiler. All the rest of it is exactly the same as we had as shown in the previous episode. Now some people might not be particularly happy with that arrangement of having a mixture of 230 and say 24 volts in the same box. And if you don't want that, there is another possible option. So let's have a look at that one here. Now this diagram is basically what we started with, it's the all 230 volt option, and again we've got that boiler there with a the switched line input. So again we'll just change that to a boiler with the two different inputs there. So here again we've got our boiler, it's still got the line neutral earth obviously as a supply, but we've now got the A and B terminals which we need to connect together in order to activate the boiler. And I've also moved it into a slightly different position there because there's another piece of equipment here we need to install. Now currently that wire coming from number 9, which is the switched output, doesn't connect to anything, so uh, the extra piece of equipment we're going to need is called a relay. Now a relay just has two components inside. First of all there is a switch, which is shown here on terminals 1 and 2. So in the default state like this the terminals are not connected, but of course when the relay is energised 1 and 2 are connected together. And the other part of the relay is a coil, which is shown here with the word coil, surprisingly, and it has two connections which are line and neutral. When that's connected to power, that becomes an electromagnet, and that is what closes the switch on the other side. So you've got two things in there. They're completely separate electrically. They're just a mechanical link which just closes that switch or opens it as required. Now in terms of connecting to the relay, it really is quite straightforward. The switched line coming from the wiring centre on that terminal 9 there goes to the line input for the coil. Coil also needs a neutral connection, so again that just goes back to a neutral terminal in the wiring centre. And then the two terminals for the switch, which we've labelled here as 1 and 2, just need two wires from those going to the two terminals in the boiler. So again shown here as A and B, but maybe different on different boilers. And that's pretty much the entire wiring for that. So just run through the sequence again here. So for zone 1, which is the top one there, the contact will move across inside the thermostat unit. That sends 230 volts out on pin number 3. That comes to terminal 7 in the wiring centre there, and that's connected to the brown for valve number 1. So of course that's powered up and the motor inside opens the valve. 
when the valve is fully open, a switch inside will connect the grey, which is connected to permanent line here, to the orange. So we get 230 volts coming out on the orange wire. That goes to pin 9 there in the wiring centre. And that is the wire now which goes to our relay. Coil in the relay will now be energised, and because it's energised it will close the switch inside that relay, basically joining together pins 1 and 2 as shown on the relay. And those pins are connected directly to the boiler, which is the A and B terminals. So of course that joins them together, activates the boiler, which then heats up the water and circulates it through zone 1. And again, it doesn't matter what the voltage on those A and B terminals is, because it's whatever the boiler is supplying. It's literally just a switch across the two terminals, so it doesn't matter what voltage it is. And you could actually use this with a 230 watt boiler if you wanted to, although there wouldn't be a huge amount of point, because it just means buying an extra relay which you don't actually need. So in this case, all of the wiring in the wiring centre is still 230 volts. The only connection to the boiler's 24 volts or whatever is within the relay itself, and you could put that in a separate box or enclosure, which again will keep all that separate from the rest of the wiring. Now the sequence for receiver 2 is exactly the same, and we've already seen that previously in this video, and also in the previous episode as well, so we're not going to show that here again. But it's fine to say, it just turned on the things as before. The end result is that the relay coil is energised, the switch closes, and again the boiler of course is activated. So that's two heating zones and a combination boiler, and where the combination boiler input is not 230 volts, so it's either 24 or some other lower voltage. And uh, one thing we've covered already, I'm just going to say it again, if you have a boiler like that, it's absolutely vital that you do not connect 230 volts to any of the other inputs, say 24 volt or whatever else. If you do that, even for a brief short time, it's going to cause expensive damage to the boiler. You're going to probably need a new PCB in there, which is typically a few hundred pounds, and they're also going to need someone to fit the thing and set up the boiler properly. So there's a few more hundred pounds on top. So definitely something you want to avoid. If you do that, then there really aren't any second chances. It's going to damage something. Now, what we've seen here can also be used with a 234 input if you want to. The uh, first example there, without the relay, just connecting the two wires together. That is also valid for 230 volt. The only difference there means you're adding an extra cable back to the boiler, so you've got two wires, one of which is going to be permanent line and the other one is the switched input. So you can use that with 230 volt inputs as well. There's generally not a huge amount of point because it just means you need an extra wire to the boiler. And uh, if you wanted to use a relay controlling the boiler, well, again, you can even if it's a 230 volt input, but again, not really a whole lot of points in doing that, just it's extra cost to the installation. So that's the end of this particular video. Until next time, thanks for watching.